minus 15, guidance internal, PM is ready for boost. T minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, command and 2, 1, ignition. Right, and New Shepard has cleared the tower and is heading to space. Uh, you see our mission yeah, countdown is along this whole line with the actual countdown clock there, and that's okay. Uh, we, are, we are heading up to space now. New Shepard is flying uh, through the atmosphere. BE-3 yeah, is providing 100% power level at this point. So next up, we're going to be... Uh, Ascending through the, the zone we call max Q, and this is the point at which the atmospheric pressure on the vehicle is at its maximum. So this is a critical part. The B3 engine is going to pull back just a little bit in terms of its uh, thrust as we punch through that zone. These are the first views that we're getting of this brand new rocket in that uh, shiny new livery as it flies to space. And there we go, we've passed max Q. Now BE-3 is going to punch back up to 100% power level, uh, which is gonna help the rocket move faster and faster up through the atmosphere. Uh, right now we're at 50,000 feet and climbing, just approaching about 1,000 miles an hour. So as we keep watching the propulsion module uh, head to space, you see those racing stripes at work. Uh, right now, if there were to be astronauts on board, they would be experiencing about three Gs, so enough to know that you're really on a ride. Of course, today we only have payloads in the capsule. We're approaching 100,000 feet now, about 1,500 miles an hour. Now, one of the next milestones that we're going to come up to here will be MECO. That's main engine cutoff, and that's when the vehicle stops uh, thrusting forward and will we'll, um, start coasting into space. Hundred and sixty-five thousand feet. We've approached uh, two thousand miles an hour. And that view on the left. Okay, so there's there's Miko. We've just uh, shut off the main engines, and now the vehicle is going to be coasting on its way on its journey uh, up to space. The views that astronauts would be getting if they were looking out the windows uh, on a flight like today would be just spectacular at this point. Oh, and you can see that zero G indicator at the bottom of your screen indicating that the uh, capsule has reached Yep, and we zero see G. separation now through that right side of your screen. You see the capsule is now separating in distance away from the booster. This is the moment that uh, the ride to space is all about, really, for payloads or future astronauts that will be riding on this vehicle. So each of our payloads is going to be collecting some amount of data, and of course those postcards are getting their own zero-G moment. About three and a half minutes into the flight, we are approaching uh, the Carmen line at this point. New Shepard is, uh, you can see the, the velocity, the miles per hour is decreasing now on the left side as, as we approach the apogee moment. All right, now we're seeing on the left side of your chart, we're seeing a new set of data. This is the data that tracks the booster's descent. The booster has, uh, is finding its own apogee moment, and in a moment it's going to start descending. All right, it has hit its apogee and is now descending back to West Texas. Meanwhile, the crew capsule is continuing to ascend to its own apogee. Uh, giving plenty of zero-g time to those uh, payloads on board. The booster is now at uh, below 300,000 feet, 
and descending. You can see it's picking up speed as it falls. Now the booster's shape is designed to be more aerodynamic, so between the two vehicles, the booster is going to win the race back to the ground, uh, back to West Texas. So the booster will land about two miles north of where it launched off the launch pad. Um, and we're going to see it aiming its way back there. What we're anticipating next is the deployment of some of our wedge fins. You'll see that on the forward. Uh, we'll see the telemetry on the left there highlight that that's happening. So we're looking for deployment of our control surfaces as we continue our descent. So far we're looking at a nominal flight. This is the NS-27 mission, the first flight of an all-new vehicle, an all-new booster, all-new crew capsule for our fleet. And there we have it. The wedge fins have deployed. And so as the booster makes its way back down to launch site one, uh, it'll be helping keep maintain stability on its descent using those fins and the general aerodynamic shape of our rocket. We're at max re-entry velocity at this point, just under Mach 4, and those wedge fins, as you've noted, are going to start decreasing the uh, speed of the vehicle as the vehicle is encountering more and more atmosphere on its way back to West Texas. It looks like a nice and smooth descent. That's a great shot right there from our long-range camera back in the ground. The wedge fins, steering fins, the ring fins, they're all working together to guide that booster home. Next up, we're going to see... Uh, the drag brakes inside the, wing, the ring fin, they're going to deploy, and that's going to dramatically cut that speed of the, of the booster back down. Should be about by there half, it is. and we'll see that here. There we go. There's those drag brakes. They're going to increase the surface area, and that speed of that booster is dropping rapidly, as expected. There's the sonic boom that we hear on descent. And there we have engine relight. The landing lights are deploying. That new Shepard hover. And touchdown. Welcome home, new Shepard. New Shepard's landing of the booster continues to be one of our just proudest moments here at Blue Origin. Uh, it's really symbolic of just the incredible engineering that is going into building, designing, and operating this rocket so that we can bring it safely home from space. It never gets old. I, I swear, every time I see that booster landing, it uh, gives my heart a boost. And, you know, for the folks in Texas, this is both the end of the booster's journey to space today, but the start of its next recycle. Let's wait now as the, as the team reacquires the, the view of our crew capsule. And there we have the capsule. The drogues have deployed. We'll see that capsule start to slow down as it descends into the valley on launch site one. It looks like the main chutes are out. So we are zoomed in here on the capsule. But if we were to zoom out, you'd see those three beautiful red and blue main parachutes. Yeah, the, there they are right there. Beautiful. So those parachutes are essential in providing that gentle touchdown for the capsule, both for our payloads today and future astronauts. In addition to the parachutes, New Shepard features a retro thrust system that's on the base of the capsule. So to make the final touchdown even smoother, you'll see that burst of air if you've ever seen a New Shepard launch. It's a very characteristic moment. And now we are getting a little bit of a choppy feed on the video, but the telemetry is coming through here, so you can see that the capsule is descending. There's the, the mountain range behind the capsule. Uh, 16, 17 miles an hour is the totally nominal descent at this point for the mission. Uh, and but those retro thrusters should take that down to just a few miles an hour, a very easy descent.
within 200 feet. And touchdown. You see that plume of dust in the desert that is uh, caused by that last puff of air that comes out of the capsule at the very last second. Uh, wow. Welcome home, New Shepard. Uh, this is a great mission. Great day watching this new vehicle fly to space and back. Um, this moment, of course, is, is culminates every mission when the, the crew capsule touches down. This is normally when we're welcoming home our astronauts that are going to be on board. And hopefully very soon we'll see astronauts on board uh, this vehicle. I want to say welcome to the fleet uh, for, this, for this brand new vehicle. And you know, uh, all of this, when we're, we're broadcasting these missions, it's really all about uh, the, the human spaceflight, uh, the, the age of, of human spaceflight that's really opening up here. Um, and